All right, okay, Shalom, Shabbat Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai. First and foremost, Kal Halalim La Yahweh, Baha Sham Hamashayak, Yahweh Shai, Wa Baha Rakha Kudash. Double honor goes out to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule and teach Yasha Allah well, the 100% truth and doctrine. Enough respect, peace, and salutations goes out to the Akim out there pushing his way throughout the four corners of the earth. Present their bodies as a living sacrifice to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai sake. And to you few sisters who are doing the right thing, to you I say Shalom and Adawan Ratazah, which means Lord willing, you know, so Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Alright, and this lesson is going to be on the Day of Atonement. Alright, the Day of Atonement, Kaparium Yuam. Alright, so we should know, you know, of course, that. This is a high holy day. Alright, so for you new brothers and sisters just coming in. Okay. This is one of the most important, you know, times of the year. As with, you know, all our high holy days. Okay. You know, but this is a time to reflect, you know, and repent. As we should anyway, considering the times that we're in. You know, reflect and repent. You know, on our past sins, you know, our sins and transgressions, you know, be that before the truth or in the truth, okay, both really, you know, as well as our our lives, you know, our past lives, you know, our past incarnations, you know, because reincarnation is real and biblical, okay. So without further ado, we're going to read the first verse, <coughs> Leviticus chapter 23. Verse 26 And Yahweh the Lord spake unto Masha, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord Yahweh. Right? So, you know, this is again a holy convocation. Right? Day of Atonement. In fact, let's look up the word atonement. Right, so the Oxford Dictionary definition of atonement on Google. Atonement. Goes into the action of making amends for a wrong or injury. And that's what repentance, repentance is. You know, to turn back. To feel sorrowful for your sins. In religious context, reparation or expiation for sin. Okay. Let's look at the word atonement as well, the Hebrew word for that. Let's go down to it. And the word is kapa. Let's get the root word. It goes into cover, purge, make an atonement. Alright. You know, by fasting and praying. Alright, we're you know purging out the old leaven in us. Okay. But of course, it's the blood of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai that can truly cleanse you. Because before Yahweh Shai came on the scene, all right, we had animal sacrifices. All right, the Levitical priests, you had to go and fess your sins to, you know, a Levite, and they would offer an animal sacrifice to, you know, forgive you of your sin. But then the true and pure, unblemished sacrifice, which is Yahweh Shai, would be adequate enough to fix that. All right, so it goes into make an atonement, make reconciliation. All right, and Yahweh Shai can reconcile us back to the Father Yahweh. All right, to pacify, to cover over, to atone for sin, to make atonement for. All right, so that's what it is. Now, obviously, prior to. <coughs> All right, the uh, atonement starting, which is sundown, Sunday the 4th, this year, Sunday the 4th, to Monday sundown. All right, it's best to rehydrate, you rehydrate yourself, so like it, for my slip of speech. And, you know, make sure you eat enough. Now, if we go to Matthew, 
chapter 6. We'll go straight to verse 17 to point. Alright, this is Yahweh Shai speaking because it's in red letters. Matthew 6, verse 17. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face. Alright. So, you know, before you begin the atonement, make sure you do that. Alright, wash your face. Okay. Anoint thy head, you know. Get some organic, good, you know, quality organic coconut oil, cold pressed, whatever the case may be. Extra olive virgin oil. Alright, and anoint your head. Okay, and this is the reason why, because if you go further up in the verse, start in verse 5, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Truly, I say unto you, they have the reward. Right? You know, even you see that, you know, in these Christian churches. You know, or even around your, your table, you know, back in the world if you celebrated, you know, like Christmas or anything like that, you'd hold hands, you hold hands with each other and, you know, sing a prayer, say a prayer. We also have that in churches in these loud choirs, you know, who are ushering out the prayers loudly, all right, congregating. Even in, you know, in the Islamic religion, we have Muslims who openly prostrate themselves and pray. And pray to, you know, their God. Okay. You know, and that's going off. Right. So you go to verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. Right. You know, pray in private. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father, Yahweh, which is in secret. And thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Right. And that's clear. All right. Okay. That's what you ought to do. Verse 7, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they should be heard for their much speaking, right? You know, again, you know, prime example is them Christian churches, plantation Christianity. Okay? They have these lengthy prayers. Alright? Saying the same old thing. As if Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai isn't... <laughs> which, you know, they're not even... They're not even praying to that, they're really praying to, you know, Serapis Christus, Seizure Borgia, Jesus Christ. Alright? But the ones who are, you know, sincere of the nation of Israel, you know, who are still going to church. Alright? Lord willing, the Lord will take them out of that. But then again, you know, they use, you know, vain repetitions. Alright? As if, you know, the Lord isn't, doesn't know what you need even before you pray. Because the, the Lord knows all things. Verse 8. But be, but, uh, sorry. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Right? Because the Lord knows everything. He already knows what you're going to ask him. He knows the number of hair on your head. He knows everything. Alright, let's go back to Leviticus, chapter 23, alright, verse 26, or oh, verse 27, verse 27, also on the tenth day of the seventh month there shall be a day of atonement, it shall be in holy convocation unto you, you shall afflict your souls, you know, you do that by fasting, alright, an offer, an offering made by fire unto the Lord, right? And the offering that we're making is ourselves, right? We don't need to offer, you know, an animal which was done in the past. Get a precept on that. Romans, I believe it's Romans 12, verse 1. Great. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, and beseech goes into beg. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. All right, separate, acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. Okay, so ourselves are our living sacrifice. Okay, that's why we don't need to offer, you know, an animal to sacrifice. 
Let's go back to verse 27, Leviticus 23, verse 27. All right. You know, and afflicting your souls. And we do that by fasting, abstaining from water, from all fluids, food. All right. Any pleasures like entertainment, you know, or coitus, you know, with your, with your woman, if you have a woman. All right. No eating or drinking for 24 hours. Okay, so, you know, when it's time to break the fast, you know, make sure you break it with, you know, like a water-dense fruit, you know, like a melon or something, or even something like dates, you know, so it's easy on your body for when you're easing back into it, especially if you've not fasted before or often. Okay. You know, notice how we say, I say the, uh, sorry, so like you, you know, this is something we should all, you know, aim to, you know, do. And continuing and enduring, all right, because you know, I'm not exempt from it. You know, first and foremost, I mentioned my <clears throat> you know, I should mention myself because you know, it applies to me first. I'm the one saying it, so it applies to me first, all right. You know, fasting and praying, you know, especially considering the times that we're in, you know, because we've all short, uh, we've all fallen short. Of the glory of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, roughly paraphrasing. <clears throat> and let's go to verse 28. And you shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before Yahweh, the Lord, your power. Okay? Alright, so it's a Sabbath as well. You know, so again, if you can, try and get the day off. Okay, if you can, or, you know, beforehand, you know, do whatever you can to try and get the day off, but if you can't, you know, that's where the great, you know, that's where the mercies of Yahweh comes in, because again, we're in captivity, okay, because, you know, some brothers, you know, have to work, all right, uh, verse 29, for whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Right, and that's where mercy comes in, because, again, we can't keep the laws perfectly in this captivity. Verse 30. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Again, that's where the mercy comes in. He shall do no manner of work, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings, right? Okay. So that law's not done away with. It's supposed to be doing it annually. Okay. Verse 32 It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month, at even, from even unto even, shall you celebrate your Shabbat. Alright. And again, you know, we slip up. You know, because we're in this wicked flesh, we're in captivity. You know, we can't keep all the laws. And the ones, you know, that's why it's only the ones we can keep, you know, we're accountable for, to the best of our ability. Alright, so when we fall short, the blood of Yahweh covers us. If I get Romans 6. I think it's... Yeah, I start verse 15. Romans 6 and 15. What then shall we sin, because we are not under law, but under grace? Yahweh forbid, meaning no. No, you're not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey his servants, Yah whom ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Alright. Verse 14 as well. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. And again, what then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. Yahweh forbid. Right, just because we're under grace it don't give us the, the go ahead to you know, say, oh, you know, I'm not perfect. I'll just break the law anyway. Okay. You know, we're supposed to rehearse the righteous acts. Again, to the best of our ability. And where we fall short, the blood of Yahweh shall covers us. All right, because this grace period is temporary, you know, and it's coming to an end. Okay, precept. This is Judges chapter 5. 
verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of Yahweh the Lord, even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of Yahweh the Lord go down to the gates. Right, so we meant to rehearse the righteous acts. All right. Go back to uh, Leviticus chapter 23. So again, afflict your souls. Okay. All right. You know, because it's better to go to the house of mourning, you know, than the house of feasting. Roughly paraphrasing, I believe I said that right. Uh, right. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7. Verse 2, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Verse 4, the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of the fools is in the house of mirth. And, you know, now's not the time to be into that jolly, mirthy spirit. Alright, you know, because the judgment of the Lord is going out. You know. So lucky, bear with me. Right, I'm back. Okay. You know, I'm back, and you know, fasting. There's many benefits to that. All right. Spiritually and both physically. It's from this website, Healthline.com, and it's from 30th of July 2018. Eight health benefits of fast uh, fasting. I won't read the whole article, I'll just gather the main points. You know, promotes blood sugar control by reducing insulin resistance. Alright. Promote, it promotes better health by fighting inflammation. May enhance heart health by improving blood pressure, triglycerides and cholesterol levels. May boost brain function and prevent neurodegenerative disorders. You know, mental clarity. Alright can help fight off diseases infections cure a lot of you know sicknesses helps with weight loss and intake and boosting metabolism you know may even extend your age and longevity you know and, you know these doctors these days they're not gonna recommend things like this Right, so um what to book a Matthew. Verse seventeen Ma sorry, Matthew chapter seventeen. Go straight to twenty. It reads, And Yahweh I said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, he shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Verse 21, Howbeit this kind goeth out, goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Right? And obviously if you know a mustard seed, it's very small. You know? And this indicates that there's le different levels of, of belief, of faith. Alright? And combining prayer and fasting together, you know, drives away certain evil spirits you know evil spirits of infirmities okay and that truly demonstrates the effectiveness of fasting and praying you know together you know that's it on there. I just wanted to touch on you know the day of atonement all right especially you know for you you know new brothers and sisters things of that nature so again double honor to the 
elders and apostles a great millstone. You know, keep uh, keep enduring. You know, keep praying, stay prayed up. You know, pray for one another, pray for the apostles, pray for the elders. All right. And again, keep enduring. In closing, I'd like to give all praise and all glory and all honor to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakudash, Shalawam, Shibaf Shalawam to the elect.